welcome to another one of my Spiritus Musings vlogs. I am filming this from outside the Palazzo de Republica, which used to be the governor's house, or the, actually the president's house of Brazil, and the park outside. It's a beautiful park, many wonderful statues. It's a great area. So today we are talking about your soulmate. And I know many people are looking for their soulmates. And then it's very frustrating when you feel you've gone through your life and you haven't found them or you're trying to find them. And it's not easy. So let's explore why it's not easy and why sometimes your soulmate may, may be there close to you, but they are in the spirit world. They are helping you from above. And that in this life, you may have to go through a life without your soulmate. So life without your soulmate, why don't you have your soulmate? Why can't you find your soulmate? Well, it may be for a very good reason. It may be that you need to have a life apart. Now, before I talk about soulmates, let me talk about the spirits book. As far as, you know, some of the people who are in same-sex relationships, etc. There's nothing wrong with that. In the spirits books, they, they were asked by Alan Kardec, who codified spiritism, what is a marriage? And they say a marriage is between two spirits. And they also say in another part of the book that a spirit can come back at, as either sex. And this was in the 1850s. This was very, uh, you know, dangerous stuff back then. So you can tell Spiritism has never said anything that I have read so far uh, contra same-sex marriages. So, so when I talk about soulmate, it could be whatever, whatever soulmate you so desire or knew that you had but somehow you can't find. Now let's talk about that. So there there are examples of people who are soulmates who are in the spirit world and yet they are apart. My wife was reading this book by uh, in it was in Spanish it was written by a, a uh, person who from the spirit world psychographed his life in, in uh, to a Spanish medium and he was married to his wife and he went through a marriage and they had learned some things, he had made some advancement, otherwise he hadn't. And then they both, you know, died, he met her back in the spirit world, and his wife was talking about planning their next life. And his wife said, okay, now in this next life, we can't be together. So let's explore, why did she say that? Well, she said that because the spirit world had determined that his spirituality hadn't as grown as well as hers. And why is that? Because he depended upon her for her quotient. For, she actually gave more spirituality than he acquired. And therefore, he needed to acquire more of that in his own life. So she told him, look, we have two of our grandsons. I believe they're grandsons. I don't remember exactly. She says, one of them is going to take over your business and make it very successful. The other one is going to be a member of the Spiritus Center, it's going to be more spirituality. He goes, which one would you like to be the son of? And he said, well, I want the rich one. And of course, I thought, when my wife was telling me this, I thought, oh, I'd pick the rich one, which is shows you my spiritual immaturity. And then his wife said, well, I don't think that's a good idea. You're supposed to learn more about spirituality. You're not supposed to just be lead a comfortable life again. In fact, her life, she was going to be poor, uh, born as a poor woman somewhere in the Washington, D.C. area, which is very interesting. So you never know where you're going to end up from one life to another. So if finally, her husband, you know, her soulmate said, okay, yes, uh, I understand. I need to be born in this family where, where I acquire spirituality. So you see, you never know. So they were both on earth approximately the same time, and yet they were destined never to meet. And she said she was going to have a very hard life, a poor life, I think because she had a lot of spirituality, but she had a lot of material comforts and she wanted to uh, actually grow herself more. Spiritism explains so many things and it gives us so many clues about our life. And it's easier once we understand and we read and study about spiritism to understand the plight of our own life, the trajectory of our own life. Why we go through, through the things we must go through. And this is why sometimes finding your soulmate may be not possible in this life. I know it's very hard for people. 
because people want that. They want that love. They want that connection. And the reason you want that connection is because you've had it in the spirit world. And that connection was wonderful. It was just a, a feeling of, 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 you know, bliss and excitement that you were with this other spirit that you just seem to be part of. And this is why you are drawn to it and you long for it. But please bear this in mind, as I said before, it may be something that you had used kind of that supplemented a part of you that you had not grown enough yourself and therefore it's been determined that you really are better off with a separate life in the life you are leading now but don't worry that soulmate is ready for you when you go back to the spirit world and that love will be forever and and also the time on earth is so short compared to your immortal life there's another example we can we can go with. Let me show you the wonderful statue here in the park first. This man and woman, they were married, and he had a successful business. And his business partner kept trying to seduce his wife. Of course, she never said anything she, because she knew he was very close to his business partner. But his business partner was so jealous, he tried to set up the wife. He tried to talk to the, his business partners, thinking, your wife is unfaithful to you. And he actually tried to fake something with her. So he, the, the, the wife was very, you know, very nice. She didn't say anything bad about the business partner. But the husband grew so suspicious, he rejected her because he thought so she's not loyal because of, of bad gossip from his business partner. Well, after he died, he found out that his business partner had completely lied to him and he had thrown away his wonderful soulmate. Well, guess what? His next life, he wasn't allowed to be with a soulmate because he did not, he did not keep that precious gift he was given. He, he, you know, he, he wasn't patient. He, he, you know, he didn't believe in her. He should have so, shown much more faith and dedication and caring and believing what she said instead of believing his business partner. So there are so many reasons why for some, re for some unknown event that we had done in the past, we may not be allowed to see our soulmate. But keep this always in mind. Our soulmate is either on earth and we may meet them in our dreams and talk to each other and say, look, this is what we, you know, we're, you're doing this right, you're doing that wrong, let's improve on this. Or your soulmate could be in the spirit world helping you from afar or actually from near, but you just may not see them. So you may feel that inspiration, you may feel that comfort. Or you may have those dreams of someone that you connect with and then you're frustrated because you're in a relationship with someone you really don't connect with. There's always a reason for this. So I was given this topic by someone I was talking to and we were talking about marriage and relationships. And this is why the whole idea came up is that some people are not gonna be able to find their soulmate. Some people are in a relationship that's okay, some not very good, and others horrible. And if you have a horrible relationship, it's best for, I, I believe, everyone if you try to withdraw from that honorably, with honesty and charity. But some people know they are not going to find their, their soulmate, and therefore it might be good to increase your spirituality, concentrate on other things on your aspect besides that. It may be a trial that you've set for yourself from the spirit world. I want to thank everyone who's been and listening to me today. And remind everybody again, go to my blog, nwspiritism.com. That's nwspiritism.com. And read my book. The book that might be interesting for you is The Seven Tenets of Spiritism, How They Impact Your Daily Life. That's my book that I've written. It was more as like as my personal journey and how I found spiritism and what it means to me. What, what each tenet, how it affects my life on a daily basis. So I think it may be interesting to you again that seven the seven tenets of spiritism how they impact your daily life you can get that on kindle or in paperback and it's again that's all on the right hand navigation side of my uh, blog nwspiritism.com i want to say god bless everybody and here i am speaking from beautiful rio de janeiro in the park next to the to the palazzo de republica
God bless.